the profile interview segment this week, I was speaking with the Secretary General of the Medical and Health Workers Union of Nigeria. He brought us up to speed on several challenges workers in the healthcare sector are faced with, while highlighting the need for government at all levels to honor collective bargaining agreement, as many of their demands have not been met since 2009. <music> It's good to have you on the program. Thank you very much and my pleasure. A lot has happened in the um, healthcare sector, especially after the suspension of the indefinite strike called by Joesu. Can you bring us up to speed if um, there has been any changes since the strike was um, called off months ago? Well, uh, thank you very much for this uh, very important question. Let me start uh, by appreciating and commending the entire family of Jehesu in Nigeria for their commitment, for their sacrifice and solidarity, as well as loyalty to the leadership of Jehesu. Uh, responding to your question of uh, if there is any development, yeah, I think we decided to put on hold the industrial action at uh, Jehesu level following the intervention of uh, so many well-meaning Nigerians, as well as uh, our mind of always trying to be a peacemaker, peacemakers, as well as uh, some people who believe that uh, healthcare delivery is not for uh, the big people, it's for uh, common man. There was a committee set up by the federal government to take a look of our issues and uh, discuss and submit its report for federal government to federal government for implementation. And uh, if you could recollect vividly, that committee was uh, at the tail end of the former government of uh, Muhammadu Buhari. So I think uh, the committee sat and there was a robust discussion between the committee and the federal government. Uh, coming to the issue of uh, probably what we discussed and arrived at the committee, yeah, we agreed the withheld salary of April and uh, May following our participation of, uh, of uh, National Industrial Action, which uh, by then Minister of Labor, Chris Ngigi, directed uh, to uh, return the salary, capitalizing of, uh, on issue of no work, no pay. The committee discussed and uh, it has even put a memo to the president for consideration on compassionate uh, ground. Um, I would still like to draw you back to the issue of um, retailed salaries. Um, that was due to the no work, no pay um, stand by the federal government then during the strike that happened in 2020. Um, what has been the feedback of your members that after more than two years, um, right now they still have not been able to receive um, salary for those months? Well, thank God, I think, as I said, uh, some category of uh, members have been paid and some are at the five line, five line of the payment whereby this, uh, the former government uh, uh, tenure is paid. So I think uh, in our last uh, meeting at Juhesu level, we agreed that the payment or the release of that uh, was health salary shall continue, more especially to those that are yet to be, to be paid. But what uh, importantly we hammer on is the issue of uh, conhens adjustment. Uh, this conhens salary structure adjustment, if you could recollect, it was approved by the federal government and it, it, is, it was even at the stage of implementation, I think, at uh, fiscal revenue and mobilization for betting, where our sister medical doctors decided to raise alarm that uh, in as much as conhens is adjusted, they will also demand for review of mm -hmm. comments. 
And uh, I want to inform you that uh, the comments salary structure was reviewed upward almost twice. So I think uh, that's why Juhay's leadership feel that uh, we must restart somewhere. If you go remember, we issued an ultimatum and we even embark on that industrial action for two days whereby President uh, Bola Ahmad Tenibu decided to intervene on the issue. Let me use this uh, medium and opportunity to, in a serious note, commend and appreciate President Bola Tenibu for his quick intervention. Uh, if maybe issues of paramount important, I think uh, address at the early stage, I um, can tell you the industrial disharmony which is existing between uh, the labor family and the federal government or whatever government, I think it will not be even there. And as, as, the main time, as the main time, I want to use this opportunity to uh, call on President Bola Ahmad Tinibu to kindly, as a matter of urgency, try to see that uh, the issue at stake, it even goes to the conclusion stage. I can tell you, the Hesu family, as I said, we are peacemakers and we don't have any issue that will create a havoc between the federal government and, uh, and our members. There's been this trend of government not honoring agreement. Most of these agreements or some of these issues that um, stimulated um, industrial action at one point or the other are agreements that had been signed since the year 2009. As a trade unionist, um, do you think that uh, for every memorandum of understanding that um, is reached between government and the unions, do you think that there must be a timeline that must be put in place for the implementation, or do you think that there should be laws to protect whatever MOU that is reached between government and the people? The answer is simple. At whatever MOU signed, I think that it is very important to reflect a specific time frame. Number two, yeah, a leader who is a law abiding leader must comply as well as respect uh, constitutional prohibition as well as uh, uh, agreement or resolutions. This is the challenge that this current government will try to address securely. Agreement is an agreement. Mm -hmm. Being it court judgment, being it memorandum of understanding, being it collective bargaining agreement sign, I think as a law abiding citizens, we have to uh, agree as well as abide by whatever resolution, whatever conditions reached and signed. And let me tell you, all the MOU or the agreement reached between government and the labor side, it was not under duress. Mm. It was because it was as a result of, I think, collective argument and collective decision that even warrant to reach at a uh, uh, level of uh, signing agreement. So I assume one is expected to go with his agreement and one is expected to go with what uh, he committed himself to do. So the only thing I can tell this government is let's try as much as it can to respect agreement. We know Bola Tanubu, Ama Tanubu is a law abiding citizen. And we are optimistic we will do everything possible to ensure that even his, the people that uh, who are in his cabinet must be law-abiding people. Labor is a law-abiding organization or umbrella. And in as much as I think President will adjust on that, Sharon, I can tell you this industrial disharmony between government and labor family, it will not even suffix again. Still talking about collective bargaining agreement, um, health workers um, have been complaining that there are some of the allowances that has not uh, 
been paid by government. We know that this administration just commenced, they just kicked off a few weeks or a few months ago. What will be your message? Um, would you want to state some of the allowances that are still outstanding? Yeah, I think uh, part of the conditions we, I think, tabled before Mr. President or before the present government, I think there is a review of that, uh, of some allowances. Yeah. Uh, as I said, we are all responsible uh, citizens. We all know whether if government has money or not, we all know. But the issue of money or not, I think uh, that aside, the most important, as you rightly pointed out, if agreement is reached, I think it's better for the two parties to respect that agreement. And the agreement is not binding. There are some conditions that maybe if uh, there is shortfall of money, we can revisit the uh, conditions and see how we can do alignment and uh, adjustment. So I think uh, uh, for somebody to say maybe government doesn't have money, no. We don't table the issue to government where we know government will not have the financial strength to handle it. Okay, finally, um, there's still this um, brain drain that... Uh the country is faced with, and we know that um, health is wealth. Um, what would be your, what are your concerns, and what are your recommendations towards ensuring that um, professionals that um, the university system is able to churn out are probably some of them are probably retained in the system, so that um, we can all be well. <laughs> well, thank you very much, uh, Sharon. To be sincere with you. The issue is very worrisome. And uh, if care is not taken, uh, looking at the uh, number of, uh, when I say health professional, I am trying to include everybody within the health uh, uh, industry. Mm -hmm. It's very worrisome. People are moving out uh, from to outside the country, looking for a better job uh, elsewhere. And unfortunately, uh, we, we Nigerians, we are not paying utmost attention to it. Uh, I think instead of us to address what were the causes, the genesis of people leaving uh, their home country to other country to render uh, services, we I think if you can remember House of that was an issue at House of Representatives of Senate where they were even trying to impose law that will deny everybody moving out uh, mm -hmm. to the country, which is not the best. Mm -hmm. We know, as a health professional, one, you have to create a better working environment for those health professionals. Two, the facilities. The facilities, I think Nigeria is the only country below, in, Af in Africa, below the average uh, level of uh, having up-to-date uh, global, uh, up-to-date equipment and materials. Then, thirdly, uh, if you take a look of even the ratio, yeah, uh, you can go to hospital now, they will say one doctor will see at least 50 patients per day. Some are even 200 patients per day. But go to the private hospitals go to the public hospitals owned by the federal government and go to the private hospitals owned by private individuals. You can see they have facilities, they have equipment, they have items, but in public health institutions or facilities, you can't see uh, those equipment. So the issue is government must prioritize health issue as number one. Because you rightly say health is wells without health all other things i think uh, uh, all other things should be uh, 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 an alternative so i think the only issue to address this issue of people moving out uh, to the country as i said one better working in uh, condition mm. two uh, provision of equipments and uh, materials three in the health sector, everybody is important. That issue of segregation between health professionals, between medical doctors, 
and nurses between medical doctors and medical lab scientists or medical doctors and other health professionals, I think it needs to immediately be stopped. Then I think uh, the last thing I can add it in my opinion, honestly, the engagement of uh, state government. Because most of the state government, you will see that they will sponsor people, take them outside the country, train them. But when they come back, as I said, they don't even have the facility to consume them as, uh, as a medical uh, uh, personnel. So they don't, will not have an alternative rather than to move out from the country and go where I think they are needed. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching and remember that labor creates wealth.